Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and this commentary is intended to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Sunday, the 6th day of March 2022, and our topic for today is Benefits of Intercession Part 3. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, the King of Glory, the Lover of our Soul, our Keeper, the Holy One of Israel, we come in humble adoration of you. Father, we acknowledge all that you do and we say that you are deserving of our praise. We thank you for life, for sustenance, even for the gift of your word that we study daily. Lord, we say thank you. We have come again to be blessed of your word. We ask that you would speak to us and let us never remain the same again. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Acts chapter 12 verse 5. Acts 12 verse 5 reads, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Acts chapter 12 verse 5. And our scripture reading for today is from the same book of Acts chapter 12. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 12 now. Acts chapter 12 from verse 1 to 12 reads, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and followed him and wist not that this was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out, and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety, that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. The topic of our devotional today one more time is Benefits of Intercession Part 3. Our Father in the Lord tells us today that in today's Bible text, we read that King Herod killed James, the brother of John. On sensing that his wicked act pleased the Jews who were opposed to the disciples of Jesus Christ, Herod went further to arrest Peter for the purpose of executing him as well. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Acts chapter 12 verse 5 the result of this intercessory act of the church was heartwarming. The Lord heard the prayers of the church and sent an angel to rescue Peter from the prison and also from being executed by Herod the king. Acts chapter 12 verse 7 reads, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands. Beloved, we deprive ourselves the privilege of experiencing great testimonies whenever we do not go to God in prayers. The lyrics of a popular hymn captions this error brilliantly as follows. Oh, what peace we often forfeit! Oh, what needless pain we bear! All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. 
In our text of today, we see how beneficial it is to intercede for one another. It is unfortunate that instead of interceding, for example, for a brother or sister undergoing a siege of sin or trial of faith, some people prefer to gossip about them. Many Christian brethren prefer to bury a wounded soldier instead of helping him to bounce back on his feet so that he could continue the fight of faith. The church interceded for Peter and he was rescued. The church will always triumph if we can give ourselves to intercession and earnest prayer one for another. This is the reason even Apostle Paul requested that the Christians should pray for him and the leadership of the early church. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 Prior to this time, the same Paul, together with Silas, prayed and sang praises to God in prison, leading to their mighty deliverance. Acts chapter 16 verse 25 to 30 The body of Christ is in serious need of intercession. Will you commit to intercede for your brethren more? God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The topic of our devotional for today one more time is Benefits of Intercession Part 3. And when we studied the pattern of our topic, we learned what intercession is. Intercession can be simply described as the act of saying a prayer or making a statement on behalf of another person or group of persons. We also learned from the example of Moses when he interceded for the children of God as the anger of God burned toward them because they complained. Our memory verse that day from the book of Numbers chapter 11 verse 2 says, And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. We learned the importance of having a leader whom God hears his voice, and also a leader who is approachable. We also learned that sin is able to put a barrier between God and man, such that he will not be heard. We also learned the importance of living a life that would make us have direct access to our Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, when we studied Benefits of Intercession Part 2, we were also told from Scripture the benefit of intercession for all men, specifically for our leaders and those in authority. The reason is not far-fetched, so that we can lead a quiet and peaceful life. By intercession, we can pilot affairs of nations. Hallelujah! We also learned that intercession can bring about a positive transformation in the life of the intercessor. In other words, intercession is also of benefit to the intercessor. This was evident in the life of Job, in Job chapter 42 verse 10, which made us understand that the Lord turned around the captivity of Job after that he had prayed for his friends. In today's devotional, we studied the part 3 of our topic, which is Benefits of Intercession Part 3. And our scriptural reading for today tells us about the Apostle Peter when he was seized by King Herod to be killed just to please the Jews. He had killed James, the brother of John earlier, and it seemed to please the Jews, so he wanted to do more of it. And as a result, he seized Peter. Verse 5 of Acts chapter 12 tells us that Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. We know the rest of the story. Now the big question is, what would have been the fate of Peter if the church had not interceded for him? Sadly, I am sure we know the answer already. The truth is he would have also been killed just like James was killed. This tells us the power of intercession. No wonder we are told today that we deprive ourselves the privilege of experiencing great testimonies whenever we do not go to God in prayers. God is all-powerful but he would not trespass into our issues if we do not invite him. He already tells us in scripture to ask and it shall be given to us. Scripture also tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We can see the evidence from the prayers of the church, how they stood their ground and prayed until there was divine intervention. I can imagine the confusion that happened the next morning when the soldiers realized that Peter was no longer there. God can intervene by any means if only we would intercede. Talking about the killing of the apostles by King Herod, who knows, if they had remained mute, he probably would have arrested every one of them and had them killed. But prayers which were made prevented that from happening. Hallelujah! Our Father in the Lord in today's devotional tells us that we see how beneficial it is to intercede for one another. He tells us it is unfortunate that instead of interceding, 
For a brother or sister, for example, who is undergoing a siege of sin or trial of faith, some people prefer to gossip about them. This is very true and even rampant among so-called believers today. So many believers today prefer to be the first to give breaking news of how one brother or sister or one great man of God, one pastor, has fallen instead of joining hands together to pray the prayer of faith for his restoration. The picture that comes to mind is a drowning man crying for help, yet no one pays attention. Instead, they prefer to take pictures and make videos of them to post on social media, instead of reaching out to help this drowning man. Like we are told in today's devotional, wounded soldiers are not expected to be buried, they should be cared for to bounce back to their feet. One of the joys of intercession is knowing that someone always has your back. You are never alone and even if you fall, there would always be that helping hand to pull you up and not a mocking tongue to put you down and not a laughing tongue to keep you down. Hallelujah. We'd bow our heads today and pray to God. We'd say, Father, grant me the grace and the passion to intercede for brethren in the name of Jesus. A sincere desire to see that we are strong and we remain standing the grace to love brethren genuinely, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Pray also today for the grace to always bring everything to God in prayer. The songwriter says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit because we do not carry to God in prayer. Ask for renewed faith, the grace to make him our first point of contact. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we are grateful for how you have helped us today. Thank you for opening us up to the need of being our brother's keepers. We ask that you uphold us today by your grace to continue being so. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have an action point in today's devotional that tells us, Organize an intercessory prayer program in your household for at least two families that are under siege currently. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our Father in the Lord instructs us to intercede on behalf of families under siege as we trust God in obedience we declare liberation from every form of siege in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 down to chapter 34. Hallelujah. We also want to appreciate you for joining us today again. Thank you for making it an awesome time with us. We are glad that you are here. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234 80 986 one one two two six. You can bless someone also by sharing this with them. Our hymn for today is the hymn sixteen of our Open Heavens devotional. We'll be singing, "Oh God, our help in ages past." Have a blessed day ahead. See you tomorrow again, and bye for now.
I believe you enjoyed today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.